Okay, we're going to continue looking at patterns today, but we're going to look at different patterns, a whole lot of different types of patterns, um, different to the ones we did last time, but we're going to just start off exactly where we were last time, just to remind ourselves and get some of those ideas firmly in place, and then we'll go on to different kinds of patterns. So say we had a pattern 2, 5, 8, 11, and we want to then know what the next term will be if it continues in that way, what the tenth term will be, etc. The first thing that's always really easy is just to look at and see, is there a relationship between one term and then the next term? And in this case, it's very easy to see that what you're doing is you're just adding on three each time. And so it's very easy to figure out what term five is. It's just going to be 11 plus three, which is 14. But now if we want to get term 10 or worse, term 100, Carrying on adding three each time and just adding and adding and adding threes is going to take us a long time. So what we want to do is change our focus from simply looking at what's the next term going to be, how do we get from one term to the next, to trying to figure out a relationship between what the term, what term number we're at and the actual number itself. So what's the relationship between term number three and eight? between 4 and 11, between 5 and 14. We want to focus our attention that way. Now, one way we can do it here is we can see, look at the structure of how things were created, because term number 1 was just a plain old 2. When we went to term number 2, what did we do? We started with the 2 and we added on a 3. Now, if we go to the next term, if we just look at the structure of how it was created, we started with a 2 and we added on 2 lots of 3. So we started with a 2 and we added on 2 lots of 3. And term number 4, well we started with a 2 and added on 1, 2, 3 lots of 3. So like that. And then our next term, term number 5, well that is starting at the 2 and adding on 1, 2, 3, 4 lots of 3. Now this way of looking at it helps us see a pattern. When we had term 5, we had 4 lots of 3 being added on. When we had term 4, we had 3 lots of 3. When we had term 3, we had 2 lots of 3. When we had term 2, we only had 1, 3. And when we had term 1, we had no 3s. So that gives us the pattern. We can see the relationship between the term number and the actual number is that it's just you start at 2 and add on 1 less than the term number. So, easy enough to figure out what term 10 is. We're going to start at 2 and we're going to add on 9, 1 less than the 10, lots of 3. 27 plus 2. 2 is going to give me 29. So term number 10 will be 29. Term number 100, easy to work out again. It's 2 plus 1 less than 100 is 99. So 2 plus 99 times 3. Term number 53, 2 plus 52 times 3, etc, etc. So we can then write that algebraically. What will term number n be? Well, for any one, you say 2 plus and you take 1 less than the number, so it's n minus 1 multiplied by 3. We can sort out this algebra a little bit. It's not terribly important to do so, but let's just have a look. 2 plus 3 times n is 3n. 3, 3 times minus 1 is minus 3. And 2 minus 3 is minus 1. So we've got 3n minus 1 is our term. Right, let's have a look at another type of pattern. Here we're going 2, 4, 8, 16. And I'm sure that you can immediately see that if you just go, what's the next number going to be? It's 2, 4, 8, 16. We're just doubling each time, so we get the next term is 32. But again, when we want to work out what term 10 is, what term 50 is, what term 27 is, what term n is, we need to change our focus from simply what's the next term to looking at what's the relationship between the term number and the actual term itself.
And to do this, we need to explore the structure. So let's have a look here. Term number one is just a two. To get to term number two, we just took that two and we multiplied it by two. To get to term number three, we went ahead and multiplied it by two again. Term number four, we did two times two times two times another two. So what we can see is, what's the relationship? Term number one, we've just got one two. Term number two, we've got two twos multiplied together. Term number three, we've got three twos. Term number four, we've got four twos. Now, if we remember our exponential notation, this is going to make it easier for us to write. Right? Term number four is two to the four. Term number three is two to the three. Term number two is two to the two. Very, very easy then to tell me what is term number 10. It's going to be two to the power of 10. And term number n is going to be 2 to the power of n. I'm not actually going to work out what 2 to the power of 10 is because that's a very, very big number, right? It's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 10 times, right? So we'll just leave it as 2 to the 10. But we can see then what the pattern is. Any term will just be 2 to the power of the term number. Okay, here's a different pattern. If you consider this pattern, 1, 4, 9, 16, actually it's not quite obvious going from one term to the next what it is, right? Because you're not adding the same thing each time. Here you're adding 3, here you're adding 5, here you're adding 7. And um, you're not multiplying it by the same thing any each time because it's not like this is multiply by 4, but if you multiply 4 by 4, you don't get to 9. and So there's not something that is constantly being multiplied. But hopefully... If you switch focus immediately to the way we have been looking at things and try and see what's the relationship between 1 and 1, 2 and 4, 3 and 9, 4 and 16, when you look at the pattern in that way, hopefully you can see what it is. Because you should immediately see that each of these things is just this thing squared. This is 1 squared, 4 is 2 squared, 9 is 3 squared, 16 is 4 squared. And that makes it really easy. What will term 5 be? It will be 5 squared, which is 25. What will term 10, 10 be? It will be 10 squared, which is 100. So what will term n be? It will just be n squared. Right, and I've saved a nice challenging one for you for last. If I have 0, 7, 26, 63, I want you to tell me what the next term will be, what term 10 will be, and what term n will be. Before I let you loose on that, let me give you one clue. Think, we've just looked at squares. See if you can think about cubes and maybe think about how that relates here. Pause the video. Give it a bit of thought and see if you can write the answer in your homework book. Okay, did my clue help you at all? Hopefully it did. We know that, let's just do it on the side here. We know that 1 cubed is 1, 2 cubed is 8, 3 cubed is 27, 4 cubed is 64. So hopefully those cube numbers are very firmly in your head because this is going to help you with patterns. Let's have a look then. If we're looking here, what's the relationship between the term number and the actual number itself? Term 1, so for the 1, it maps to a 0. For the 2, it maps to the 7. For 3, it maps to the 26. And for 4, it maps to the 64. I mean 63. Can you see... What it is, this number is just one less than the cube each time. So if you take one cubed and you subtract one, you get subtract, not equals. If you subtract one, you get zero. If you take two cubed, which is eight, and you subtract one, you get seven. If you take three cubed 
and you subtract 1, you get 26. And if you take 4 cubed and you subtract 1, you get 63. So the relationship that we're looking for is that for any term, the way you get it is you cube and then subtract 1. So what will term 5 be? We take 5 cubed and we subtract 1. 5 cubed is 125 minus 1, 1, 2, 4. For term 10, 10 cubed subtract 1. 10 cubed is 1,000. 1,000 minus 1 is equal to 999. And term n will then just be take the number, which is any number n, cube it, and subtract 1.